This next insight from working with Deepak Chopra back in 94 is um, that I loved learning the seven spiritual laws of success right here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, my favorite one is the law of detachment. So I'm going to read it to you. It's so darn good. It stuck with me all this time. In detachment lies the wisdom of uncertainty. In the wisdom of uncertainty lies the freedom from the past, from the known, which is the prison of past conditioning. And in our willingness to step into the unknown, the field of all possibilities, we surrender ourselves to the creative mind that orchestrates the dance of the universe. I love how he talks. He's so poetic. For me, the key to happiness is in detachment because I don't have control. He showed me that the control is the ego, first of all, trying to survive. And it does serve us at times, but generally it's, uh, it's not. It's in this sense. The ego is not helping us. It's causing suffering because it's attached. It wants something so badly that it feels attachment. It feels upset when we don't get it. Um, another word is allowing. So detaching, but not this, um, not this disassociative kind of a detaching or just saying, I've detached from it, but there's a trigger happening. Not that but that we're allowing whatever it is to be, or there's an acceptance of whatever there is. So, of course, you take action. This is, I have this little formula for clients. It's called the triple A way. Awareness, action, and acceptance. That's the detachment, but that's the final thing that happens. Or if you're sophisticated at this all the way along, for sure, but with clients, they want, they want solutions. They want to do something practical. They have a problem. They want the solution. So we raise awareness about it. Take all the action you can take. But if your actions don't produce the results that you want, what are your options? Let go. I'm thinking of a woman at Cisco who wanted a raise. Uh, one of the managers who was a client who wanted a raise. Great, let's do all the things you need to do to get a raise. She didn't get it the first time. We worked together for years. She got it later. But then I said, what are you going to do if you don't get it? I want you to be happy regardless. She's like, I don't know. What am I going to do? She's like, I guess I have to let go. Yes, bingo. So this law of detachment, here's an example of how it worked for me after I learned that. This example actually is from 2008 when I had my laptop up and I had some flowers, a vase of flowers right next to my laptop. And I went to close the lid on my laptop and I dumped the entire vase of water on the keyboard. So I jumped up, opened my laptop, put it down on the ground and I looked at it and I'm like, no way. There's no way that computer is going to survive. And this was before cloud backups and I knew about hard, you know, external hard drives and all this. So everything was in there. Everything. I'm looking down on it going, there's no way. And the second thing I noticed after I did that was, I'm not upset. I mean, there was... There's a tiny bit of upset, but in the past, there would have been swear words coming out, you know, angry, like, oh my God, the amount of time and energy it's going to take to capture and the things that I'll lose that I'll never capture. We know that's, that's a problem generally. But when there is um, enough meditation, enough seeing with clarity what the ego wants to do to make us suffer, and when there's a trust in life, and that's what true nature does. True nature is life. True nature trusts life. Uh, when there's enough of that, then whatever happens is okay. There's a practice. It doesn't happen all the time, but like with cars and things that happen, 
there's, I just have much more resilience and less reactivity because of this detachment, because of this acceptance of how things work. I remember when 9-11, when the planes went through the towers and I was in a hotel and people were freaking out and they were angry. And I immediately saw that my job was going to be to keep people as calm and to listen and receive their feelings, but to stay calm myself. And, and you can't talk to people about ego at a time like that. They don't want to, of course not. This was a horrible, horrible incident. But when there's an acceptance that the war, stuff happens, stuff happens in our lives and in the world. So detachment is, well, acceptance and detachment, if there's, the more of that there is, the more awakeness there is. The more we are living in abidance in our true nature. Ego does not accept things so well. I mean, healthy egos do, but we're not talking about healthy egos. So, if you want to talk more about detachment and how that happens when you really don't see how you can accept, it doesn't mean condone. It's not condoning, it's not surrendering or giving up. That's not it. If you want to talk more about it, give me a call.